CCTV was introduced in an attempt to cut crime and help us feel safe on mm. our streets. Critics, though, say it invades our privacy. Well, measures to tighten the regulation of security cameras were introduced in the Queen's speech this week. So, are people pleased with the move? We sent Tim Muffet to ask residents in one of the first towns in Britain where CCTV was introduced. It's Kings Lynn in Norfolk. The CCTV revolution began here. Well, closed-circuit television cameras have been keeping an eye on Kings Lynn Town Centre for almost a quarter of a century. For 23 years, people here have been watched and filmed. So, do they feel grateful or suspicious? So you don't mind being watched? No. As long as it's not in, like, you know, really private places or in my own house. I would say it's a good thing to keep them for the safety of the community and people's children, schools. And ran out. I think it's a good thing, but that also takes your privacy away as well. So we're going to have to learn to live with that. You think that it's invading every part of your life, that you do need some privacy. However, the vast majority of people we spoke to didn't share that concern. It was just one random selection of shoppers, but most welcomed the cameras. You need more, definitely. You need more CCTV? Of course you do, yeah. Why is that? Well, look at the state the country's in. Definitely need it, yeah. What about people's privacy? Don't they deserve to have the right to not be filmed? Of course you do. You need your privacy in your own house. As long as you've done nothing wrong, what does it matter? You know, if you've got nothing to hide, why worry about them? They can take pictures of me all day, I think, right? I've got them on my own house. Did, so, so you've got your own CCTV? Yeah, on my own house to stop the, stop the damage being done to it, yeah. Privacy campaigners may welcome the prospect of fewer cameras, but in the place where the first CCTV network was set up, many are more than happy for them to stay. Tim Muffet reporting there. We're joined by the CCTV consultant, Professor Martin Gill, Alex Dean from the campaign group Big Brother Watch, and Gordon Tyman, who's a former police officer. Welcome to you all, gents. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, it's a controversial subject, isn't it, and one that divides many. Gordon, what's your experience? Does CCTV work as a former policeman? I think it does. Um, previously, there was a lot of anecdotal evidence that really couldn't be supported, but now... Uh, there's an enormous amount of uh, prosecutions that just wouldn't work without CCTV evidence. Last week in the Crown Court, the judge said on a, a serious crime there would never have been a prosecution without CCTV evidence. Mm. So, Alex, bearing in mind the benefits that it brings us in terms of crime prevention and, and, and solving crime, isn't it worth a bit of intrusion? I don't pretend that there's no benefit from CCTV. It would be foolish to say that. But the benefits, real and imagined, you've got to remember there's lots of promised benefits that actually uh, never come to be delivered, as the academic studies show us. Those benefits have to be weighed against the costs, not just the financial cost and spending money on cameras that can't be spent elsewhere, but the privacy cost too. And there is an intrusion point about privacy in cameras. OK, Martin, you're a criminologist who, who wrote a big review for the Home Office in 2005 about the efficacy of CCTV. What did it say? Well, it was a rather disappointing endorsement of CCTV in the sense that all too often CCTV is not used very well. So while there's no doubt at all it can be effective, I think the uh, claims made by the extremes that it always works and never works are exaggerated and that uh, it can work effectively in some circumstances when it's the appropriate measure and when it's run effectively. Well, which circumstances is it best well, used that, in? You see, that's the point. What we have to do in each case is say, what's the problem we're trying to solve? All too often, particularly in this country, what we've done is says we've got a problem, let's put CCTV in. Yeah. And the reason why it doesn't work is because it's often the not the right solution to the problem. So start the other end. What problem are we trying to solve and to what extent is CCTV a potential solution to it? Right. Does that mean then, Gordon, you target CCTV only in the areas where there is a real problem? A real yeah, crime well, it's problem. part of the solution. And Martin's right. You know, you shouldn't just throw all your money into CCTV. Um, the, the, the amount of cameras we have in the country is, is dependent upon finance, as Alex says, but using them correctly, using them in the right area and making sure that the people using them know what they're looking for. Are we watched more than any other European country? Does we we are. Know? More than anyone in the world, yeah. per head, more than anyone in the world. I mean, there are more cameras on the Shetland Islands than there are in San Francisco's police department. Mm. There's got to be a reason that we uniquely have gone down. By and large, doesn't it make people feel safer? 
Well, as you were shown in your report, people, if they're asked, do you like CCTV or not, tend to say yes. But if they're not offered a choice between CCTV and something else, like a Bobby on the Beat, then I think a large part of them liking CCTV is a natural reflection of their wish to see crime go down. Martin, as somebody who's, who's worked and, and, and given a study to the Home Office, are, are there enough resources, do you think, to put Bobby's on the Beat? if you take out the CCTV cameras? No, and I don't think that's the equation we should be looking at. I mean, part of the problem is that we've jumped to solutions all too quickly. I mean, it's not realistic to expect CCTV to offer many of the benefits that claim for it. It's not realistic to expect we're going to have bobbies on every street corner. The issue is, what's the problem we're trying to solve and what's the best way of doing it? And I think you'll find both those will sometimes be very effective. Alex, Jing is out of the bottle now, isn't it, given that we have in London, 7,431 cameras in yes. London alone. Yes, extraordinary Can coverage. But the, the Metropolitan Police estimate that for every thousand cameras they have, they solve one crime a year. When those stats, when it gets down to that point, and of course you can't even prove that that one crime wouldn't have been solved in any case. Can, can I come in on the yes. number of cameras? Because the, these figures of four million that have been thrown around and you're watched 300 times a day if you're in London, they're just not realistic. Um, that 300 was a fictional v uh, walk around London going to about 25 different locations specifically to see the cameras. The average person in, in the street doesn't walk past 300 cameras a day. And 4.2 million, how do we know? We cannot count the number of cameras. Well, said, it's a very precise figure that which the BBC's got on 7,431 cameras. That, that is, which that we've is got through three million information. Right? Okay, but that's, di that's different to the... I mean, if you... Uh, extrapolate the number for London compared to the rest of the country, that's not very many. And here is the problem, you see. We don't know a lot about how, even how many cameras there are. We don't know where they are. We don't know how many effective. We don't know often the reasons why they were put in. And this is part of the problem here. We're, we're getting carried away with a measure that needs a lot more understanding, a lot more evaluation. Can I ask what the new government is going to do, which is going to be different to the previous government, and, and how we, different Britain will We look? don't know. Yeah, none of us <laughs> they, know. They, they've <laughs> said more regulation, but actually there is a considerable amount of regulation already in place, particularly for public space and public authorities. Um, the Human Rights Act, the Data Protection Act, uh, RIPA, Sex Offenders Act created the offence of voyeurism, and there are people locked up for misusing systems now. So there are some uh, regulations, some con um, systems in place already to make sure it isn't misused. That's true, but much of that regulation is about what happens once the camera is there. What I want to see from the new government is regulation about when or if the camera should go in in the first place. That's what the new the, government might be doing. Well, can I just add again that the Data Protection Act talks about risk assessing, the necessity and the proportionality. Okay. So right. there are things in place. Well, it's we a very controversial subject, isn't it? Yes. Lots of emails and Lots of emails. So if we could read a few of them. <clears throat> Dave says, I'm fed up with people talking about human rights. What about the rights of the people who are protected by the camera? and don't say there's no proof figures can be made to prove anything CCTV is very useful Malcolm in Wolverhampton echoing a point made earlier says he's got uh, no objections to the cameras as long as the police don't use them as an excuse to have less officers on the street perhaps he meant fewer <laughs> Mike <laughs> says uh, CCTV is an invaluable tool for our neighborhood policing team to help identify and prosecute individuals responsible uh, but Harry says a man kicked to death in Trafalgar Square one beaten to death in Green Park both areas with heavy CCTV plus says it all it's walking police but we well, need that explains I mean you, you cannot cover Very the whole easy. country no uh, you, you okay. have to work specifically with we have to leave it there thank Gentlemen, you very thank much you Gordon, Martin, Alex thank you, thank you.